Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. You can probably tell from the title of this video that this is going to be a really exciting announcement for a readathon. I was so so excited when I was asked to be a co-host and I cannot wait to share all my love for Canadian books with you. So this readathon is hosted by Books with Lala. It's called the Readathon because Canadians say a a lot and it will take place from August 3rd to August 9th. There are seven other amazing co-hosts that you should definitely follow. I will link all of their social media down below so you can follow them on all their platforms. We obviously first have Kayla from Books with Lala who started this readathon, Natasha from My Reading is Odd, Janani from The Story Ain't Over, Njeri from Onyx Pages, we have Jill from the book Bully, Zoe from Zoe's All Booked, and Paige from Minimal Bookie. Like I said, the main focus is to just read books by Canadian authors and I will have a bunch of recommendations that I will talk about later on in this video and if you look in my description there will be timestamps for each genre because I know that not everyone likes every genre so hopefully you will find some recommendations if you want to join us and I really hope you do. So without any further ado, let's get into the prompts. Kayla made this beautiful graphic for a bingo board which has 16 prompts. Obviously you can double up. I'm pretty sure you can triple up as well. We're not telling you to read 16 books in a week. If you can, then teach me how. The goal is to really read Canadian literature. So I want to quickly go through all the prompts. Let me find the graphic. So the first prompt is to read a book by an Indigenous author, which is definitely something that we all need to do, especially with Canada's Indigenous history. The school system really tries to hide Indigenous history. I didn't find out about residential schools until I took a children's lit class in university. So we really need to educate ourselves because if you look at the news, it's not a matter of the past. So I think this prompt is really important and I definitely want to add as many Indigenous books as I can into my reading in general. Next we have a story about a loving relationship. So we wanted something that was all-inclusive. If you like reading about romance, if you don't, we wanted to really showcase all kinds of loving relationships. Prompt three is to read a book by a Canadian publisher, which is definitely something I don't know enough about, especially because I am a book and media studies major, which has a lot of publishing elements in it as well. Then we have books with nature on the cover. I really wanted to have a few prompts that were beneficial for mood readers like me. If you're a mood reader, who tries to weasel their way into as many readathons as possible and then changes all their TBRs anyway. Prompts like these that are a little more vague are a lot more helpful because you can find like a tiny leaf on the background of one of your books that you want to read and still fulfill the prompt. So you're welcome. Um, <laughs> next we have set in a province or territory that you haven't been to. So I have only been to BC, I've been to Alberta and I live in Ontario. So I have a lot of options here to pick from. Obviously if you've never been to Canada, the world is your stage sure. Then we have Black Canadian history. Again, speaks for itself. There's no reason not to educate yourself. There is Black history in Canada as well. The next prompt is a debut author. I have a really exciting book that I definitely am going to read on my TBR that fulfills a lot of these prompts. So I will talk about it later when I give my recommendations and maybe do a kind of buddy read situation if enough people are interested. So we'll talk about that later. I don't know why I brought it up now. Then we have an LGBTQIA plus slash queer story. We have anti-racism literature. We have a Canadian children's book. Then we have set in a province that you have been to, which um, not many options for me. <laughs> we have an immigrant slash refugee story and as an immigrant, I love that this is a prompt and also I recognize that I haven't read enough immigrant stories about immigrant experiences and hopefully this prompt will definitely make me do my research and find some books that I definitely want to read and recommend. But next we have a Canadian Book Award nominee and I will admit I don't know <laughs> too many. I know there's the Giller Prize which is one of the most popular ones and then the other one I've heard of is the Rogers Writers Trust for fiction but definitely we'll have to do my research on that as well. And then we have the classic red on the cover because of the Canadian flag. I have two books to recommend later on that are red and white, so bonus brownie points. Can you tell I love these kind of prompts? The second to last prompt is a book by a black author, speaks for itself. And finally we have something that's not a novel, so it can be short stories, it can be nonfiction, poetry. So yeah, those are the prompts. Let's move into the recommendations. I have made kind of like a master list of all the Canadian books that I've come across. Obviously these are not every single Canadian book by every Canadian author. I'm really excited to watch all the other hosts TBR videos just to get more books onto my TBR as well as all the TBRs that you guys will hopefully do. I'm so excited to watch them. Don't forget to link me because I will definitely watch all your TBRs. So yeah, like I said, all the recommendations are split by genre. There are also books that I have read as opposed to books that I haven't read. And the reason I'm mentioning books that I haven't read is just to put them on your radar. I definitely have come across a lot of books that are pretty mainstream so much so that I didn't know that they were by Canadian authors, which 
I mean, it's great that the books are mainstream, but I would still like to know that they're by Canadian authors. So like I said, these are the ones that I found at this point in time. I'm sure there are a lot more. Um, so yeah, let's start with the classic literary fiction, probably the genre I read least from. For this, I have four authors and all their books, I guess, to recommend. The first is Margaret Atwood. I'm pretty sure everyone's heard of Margaret Atwood. I don't really gel with her fiction. I've tried to read, I think, two of her books and I didn't really get into either. But I did read her poetry in high school and I really liked it. She wrote a lot of Greek myths, but retold through the female character's eyes. I don't know if they hold up. I don't know if they're actually any good. I read them, like I said, back in high school, which was like... <laughs> How old am I? Three years? Three years ago. Okay, cool. I'm 20. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a math student, clearly. Next we have Emily St. John Mendel. Her book Station Eleven is really popular and one that I really wanted to get to just because it sounds really weird and I love Shakespeare, so I really want to read that one. Her new book is called The Glass Hotel. Next we have E.K. Johnston. I have only read one of their books and that is this inevitable Victorian thing. I'm not gonna lie, I read it purely because of the cover, which is just so, so pretty. I didn't particularly like it, but they do have a lot of other books. I wanted to mention them here even though I know they have a few fantasy books out because they write so many different genres. I figured I would mention them here. If I ever pick up one of their books, I'll probably stay on brand and pick up The Afterword, which is fantasy. We also have Yann Martel, who is Spanish-Canadian. I had the absolute pleasure of reading Life of Pi in middle school. Don't make a 13-year-old read Life of Pi. But if it's on your TBR, go for it. That's fiction. Gone and done. Let's move into my favorites, which is fantasy and sci-fi. I want to start off by quickly recommending two tour novellas that I have read, just because I know that this is a readathon. A lot of these tour novellas fulfill a bunch of prompts. We have The Monster of Ellen Haven. We have This Is How You Lose the Time War. These are both LGBTQIA plus reads. They're both extremely short. I enjoyed both of them, and they're both definitely worth picking up. But I will say they're pretty confusing, especially this book. I'm not a sciencey person, so like when I read science fiction, I go into it knowing that I'm not gonna understand a bunch of the things that are going on. So if that's something that bothers you, I wouldn't say pick up this one. How about we quickly go into the book that I'm definitely going to read, the one that I hope some people will want to read with me so that we can do a little casual buddy read thing. And that is The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. This is a fantasy debut by a black author. It was also originally self-published. Checks a lot of boxes in general, but also for this readathon. This is a high fantasy revenge story with Nigerian inspirations, I think either in mythology or maybe history. Just an added bonus, the sequel is coming out later this year, so it works out perfectly. This one I just want to read right away, but I'm willing to hold off until August. And if you don't want to read it for any other reason, look at how floppy the paperback is. Like this is the floppiest paperback. And I know it sounds like that shouldn't matter, but I know it does. <laughs> Next we have my two red book recommendations. We have Kings of the Wild and Spellslinger. This unfortunately is the UK copy, so... I'm pretty sure the US copy is not read. But you know what? If you put in a book depository order about now, you might get it by December. So maybe that won't work. But Kings of the Wild is definitely red and white. So there we go. This is a Dungeons and Dragons inspired fantasy about a retired band of mercenaries coming back together to rescue one of the member's daughters. This one could not tell you what it is. I just wanted this particular cover because it looked really cool. If you didn't know I was petty, um, now you know. Other than that, we have some other fantasy writers are guys. Gabriel K. He's like a foundational fantasy author. I've not read anything by him, but I do know Tigana is a good place to start. There is also The Behemoth that is Malazan, Book of the Fallen by Steven Erickson, which is apparently the most dense fantasy series, which is really long as well. I'm gonna stay away from that for now, but if that's on your TBR, there you go. And finally for SFF, we have The Themis Files, with the first book being Sleeping Giants. This is science fiction. I'm definitely a person who doesn't like to know too much about the book before I get into it, as you can probably tell from the horrible synopsis that I'm giving for all these books. This has a metal hand, a girl falls into the metal hand, and many years later she becomes a scientist to study the metal hand. I have no idea, but I've heard really good things about this series. Let's move into Young Adult. I combine contemporary and fantasy just because I didn't have enough contemporary recommendations. Whoops! Like I said, watch everyone else's videos. First of all, we have Courtney Summers who wrote Sadie, which is the only book by her that I have read. I wasn't like the biggest fan of Sadie, like I enjoyed it, but I feel like because I follow a lot of true crime, it just didn't feel as impactful as it would have if that was the first type of that story that I read. But it's a great book. It blew up on booktube a few years ago, and if you haven't read it, now's the time. We also have The Last Namasara, which I have read. It was also the first 
book signing that I've ever been to and I do have a vlog where I stay up all night before this book signing reading this book so I will link that if you want to watch Baby Roo which was like a year ago but yeah I really enjoyed this this is like a dragon fantasy standalone but there are other books in the series that follow other people this is also I guess the time where I tell you I got Dark of the West in the same book signing which is by Joanna Hathaway also another Canadian author I have not read this one yet and don't know if I will just because I haven't heard too much about it and I have a lot of other books on my TBR also signed also little plug for Baca Phoenix bookstore which is the independent SFF bookstore that I love so much here in Toronto so if you haven't checked it out support your independent bookstores I don't go to Baca Phoenix as much as I should just because it's on the way to the discount bookstore BMV so I'm cheap and I usually just walk past it to go to the BMV but now that the bookstores are open I will definitely visit it more then we have two really popular series at least here that I've only read the first book for we have Fallen Kingdoms by Morgan Road and we have Blood Red Road by Maura Young yeah could not tell you what either of these are about. Anyway, we also have Crown of Feathers. I found this Owl Crate edition secondhand, I think. It has like purple edges, which is why I bought it. But it's also about Phoenix Riders, which I'm excited about. So I'm being so chaotic right now just because I have so many books to recommend and I don't want this video to be 30 minutes long. But also I don't want to forget anything. We also have Frost Blood by Ellie Blake. Don't know too much about this, but it is YA fantasy. Okay, contemporary. Let's move into contemporary. We have SK Ali, who has written Saints and Misfits and also Falling in Love. We also have one that I'm so so hyped for. It's called Silence of the Bones by June Her. This is historical mystery and if you've been on this channel, historical mystery is the second love of my life and I unfortunately have only mostly read historical mystery set in the UK and US and this one is set in Korea. I'm so ready. Honestly, I might just pick this up before the readathon but it's going to get read either way. Next we have The Field Guide to the North American Teenager by Ben Philippe which sounds pretty interesting. Also written by a black author. This is the point in the video where I recommend my one romance author and one non-fiction book. For romance, the only one I really could think of was K.A. Tucker. I've only read The Simple Wild. I really loved it. The start of the book takes place in Toronto. Most of the book takes place in Alaska, but our main character lives in Toronto at the start of the book. And it was really funny to me because I was listening to the audiobook and at the start of the book, she is fired from her job and she's going home on the TTC, which is our subway. And she is like describing the TTC and I was going home on the TTC as well, listening to the audiobook. I thought that was really funny. But yeah, I know K.A. Tucker has a backlist that I'm so excited to get to as well. I know there are a few thrillers in there. The nonfiction that I wanted to talk about is The Skin We're In, A Year of Black Resistance and Power by Desmond Cole. Desmond Cole is a Canadian journalist and this is basically a nonfiction about his experiences in Toronto, I think, writing for the Toronto Star. This is one that I will definitely read irregardless, but I thought I would mention it here. And finally, two more left. We have children's literature and then slowly moving into indigenous literature. The reason it's together like this is because, I, like I said, I took a children's literature class where we talked about a lot of indigenous literature and I wanted to recommend some of those then move into some indigenous books that are on my TBR. Children's literature I feel like we can't not talk about L.M. Montgomery, Anne of Green Gables. I have not read Anne of Green Gables yet but I've seen so many of the TV shows so I definitely would love to get to this. I have read her other series Emily of New Moon I think that's what it's called. I didn't particularly like it. I mean, the story was fine. Our main character wants to be a writer, so that was really cool. But there was this really uncomfortable relationship. I think it's going to be a relationship in the later books. Like, if you've read the books, tell me because I don't think I want to keep reading. Because the relationship is basically between our main character who is 12 and this guy who's in his 40s. I just, I was so uncomfortable. I, I don't want to read about that. No, thank you. But this one, I definitely do want to get to it, at least book one. And you can see my BMV sticker is still on. This also works for a province I haven't been to because these books take place in PEI, which is Prince Edward Island, and I've never been there. The other children's author is Gordon Corman, who I did not know was Canadian, and he is one of the many authors that has written one of my favorite series growing up of all time, and that is the 39 Clues series. I was one of those weird kids that loved educational books. I loved this series, I loved the Magic Treehouse books, um, and Magic School Bus, I think the, the other one. These were like right up my alley. Each book took place in a different place, different city, all across the world. People were solving clues, and like it was so good at least the first series I, we don't talk about the later books Gordon Corman I think has written book two and then a few more books later on he does have his own backlist as well that I'm really excited to peruse moving into the books by indigenous authors we have Thomas King who I definitely want to read a full-length novel from we read and analyzed his picture book which is the coyote Columbus story which is basically the Columbus story but told through the First Nations point of view the book by Thomas King that I think I'm most interested in is green grass running water just because the premise interests me but also because because it takes place in Alberta, which is a place I have been to, so it works for that prompt as well. We also 
have, okay, this one I really wanted to recommend even though it's really hard to read. As I said before, I didn't know about residential schools until I read this book. And if you didn't know, residential schools were schools, they're gone now, but they were schools where indigenous children were forced to go and they were basically whitewashed and all their cultural identity was basically taken away from them. And it was a terrible environment and I'm not as well read about it as I should be. But the book that really opened my eyes to it is My Name is Sapiza by Shirley Sterling, which is pretty autobiographical. It's about a young girl and we read through her diary entries about her life at this residential school. It's a really hard read. There are still moments in this book that I still remember just being so shaken about. Just because of that, I would recommend it if that is something that you're able to read right now. Definitely look up the trigger warnings before you do and if you can't find any, come to me and I'll tell you as many as I can remember. But yeah, I did want to mention this one. As to some other books that are on my TBR, we have The Mara Thieves by Sherry Demoline and really all of Sherry Demoline's books. But this one is dystopian so I'm like, I want to start with this one. Also, I've heard a lot of people talk about this one. It's about a dystopian society where indigenous youths are hunted for their bone marrow. We also have Shadows Cast by Stars by Catherine Knutson, which is another dystopian story. At this point, you can probably tell that I was really looking for SFF recommendations written by indigenous authors, but I found this really strange one that I'm low-key interested in, and that is called Take Us to Your Chief and Other Stories Fiction with a Contemporary First Nations Outlook. That intrigued me a lot, so that might get read. Before we go, I just want to recommend the two graphic novels that I know are by Canadian authors. The first one is Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me by Mariko Tamaki. This is an LGBTQIA plus story about a toxic relationship between two girls, as you can tell from the cover and the title. Graphic novels are so great, especially for readathons, and this is probably one that I will definitely be reading. We also have an illustrator, which I feel like maybe is cheating, but Faith Erin Hicks has illustrated a lot of graphic novels, the most popular of them being Pumpkinhead by Rainbow Rowell. But also I think she's done like the Avatar comics. I think it was Avatar Imbalance. I still haven't gotten to the Avatar comics. I don't know what I'm waiting for. Maybe I will finally, finally read the Avatar comics now. I'm sorry this video is so long, but hopefully these recommendations have helped you find a TBR if you're planning on participating, and I really hope you are. But like I said before, all the links for all our hosts are down below, and once they've all posted their announcements and TBRs, I will link them down below as well in my bio. And of course, another reminder to subscribe to all of them and follow them. They're all amazing people. But yeah, that is this video, and if you liked it, the like button as well as the subscribe button are down below. Leave a comment telling me which book you're most excited for, maybe also which book you didn't know was by a Canadian author, because I was definitely surprised about a lot of these. But yeah, that is all I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.